Because many of these products that we purchase don't even, they don't even give you a demonstration. We just take that word for it. The product is this, and they give a guarantee that the product can do this and they can do that. And much to our dismay, many times, the product has to be returned. That's why they have a return policy on the things that you purchase because they know that some products are not going to meet the efficiency or the capability of what you purchase. That's why when you go back on December the 26th, amen, the customer service line is packed with people that are returning those products that you purchase. Uh, either they get a return, they return and get Amen. Uh, sometimes they will get, amen, sometimes they will get a return product in return, but sometimes they get a money back because of the product and the inefficiency of the product. The purpose of the demonstration is to show the conclusive evidence or proof of the product or service that you have. That's why they demonstrate. Now, a lot of people don't like demonstrations, but demonstrations are necessary so that you can see what the product entails. The conclusive evidence and the proof that you're not getting a, 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 you're not getting a bad product because you are purchasing this with your money and your time. In other words, we might say and use the old cliche is the proof is in the pudding. You're not just going to purchase anything blindly. You're going to look at it. You're going to examine it. You're going to see whether this product can do what they say it can do. Otherwise, you're going to leave it in the store and let some other lemon buy it. But you ain't going to waste your money and your time because time is valuable. They replace it or they give you another product. The word demonstration is only mentioned one time in the entire Bible. The word demonstration is only mentioned one time. But the the meaning and the emphasis of demonstration is very important. Why? Because the Greek word for the word demonstration is to show or demonstrate to accredit or to prove or to set forth or to show. In other words, it will show what it can do. That's why the word also translated, the word demonstration is another word that's interchangeable, the word manifestation. I like to use that, manifest, to declare, to make known, to make visible. Jesus was manifest in the flesh. God was manifested in the flesh. For this purpose, 1 John 3, 3 and 8 said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest or made known or declared that he might destroy the works of the devil. Aren't you glad that he was manifested to destroy the works of the devil? To let the devil know that he don't have no dominion, he don't have, amen, any rights because we have the power of the Son of God who came to demonstrate the power of God. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Go with me a little while. Uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were sick and oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How was God with him? Because he was anointed, glory to God with the presence and power of God to go about doing good. Not only he was healing some, but he was healing all that were sick and oppressed by the enemy. For God was with him. You want to see a manifestation of God, you got to have the presence of God with you and in you to show forth proof and evidence that God is in you. A lot of people are saying a whole lot of things and we can check back to our apostolic roots and we can see the demonstration of God on the day of Pentecost and we can see in many days after the day of Pentecost, we see how the, in the emphasis the church was thriving and the church was growing leaps and bounds. Amen. Because God was doing mighty miracles. Glory to God. The word power, the word, for the word power is the word dudamus, which denotes, amen, miracle working power. Oh Lord, have mercy. Will you understand what you 
you have on the inside of you. You got miracle working power on the inside. Somebody say, I got a miracle. I'm a walking miracle. I ain't looking for no miracle. I am a miracle. And you got dunamis power on the inside of you. And you don't realize to the potential of what God has given to you. Amen. Just like some people, amen, they, uh, they're lucky enough, amen, to hit the lottery and win millions of dollars. And they don't even realize, amen, the value of the dollar that they have because they wasted. Glory to God. When you begin to understand what God has invested to you as a believer and you are in the body of Christ and you are a baptized believer and you have received the Holy Ghost, the infilling of the Holy goes don't you know you have potential amen that you can amen rattle the devil don't you know you got potential to demonstrate in the earth of what God is and what God can do that you are more than a conqueror don't you realize that you are the head and not the tail don't you realize that you are overcomer don't you realize that you can have an influence on other people don't you realize what you have go with the God all you got to do is activate the power I use the illustration if you don't plug in the plug it won't get no forth no power but when you plug the plug into the power source you begin to see amen a demonstration of light why because it's plugged in i want to let you know when you plug into jesus i'm not talking about plugging into religion but i'm talking about plugging into the source glory to god when jesus was in the wilderness he plugged into a source and after he had been tested and tried for 40 days and 40 nights he come out of the wilderness and amen luke picks it up he said the spirit of the lord is upon me for he he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He's, amen. He anointed me to heal the sick. Amen. He has anointed me to do this and do that. Why? Because the spirit of the Lord is upon me. I want to let you know without the spirit and the anointing upon you, you can't do nothing. But when you begin to understand and tap into the anointing, glory to God, he begins to rub and begin to pour out of you. Glory to God. That's why when Jesus, the woman that had the issue of blood, when he she touched Jesus. She touched the hem of his garment. And the Bible said, the Bible said that virtue went out of him. Why? Because it was a demonstration of the spirit of the power of God that was on the inside. I want the power. Somebody say, I want this power. Look, Simon said, amen, when he saw what was happening and the effects of people that laid hands on him and they was receiving the Holy Ghost. What did Simon says? Give me also this power. Whosoever I lay hands on, that they should receive the Holy Ghost. And Peter said, amen, you, amen, how do you, amen, even conceive in your mind that you can purchase the gift of God, well, amen, with money. Glory to God, your money perish with you. Repent of your wickedness. Glory to God, you can't get this. Glory to God, you can't buy this, but you can receive this. You can receive this power. Amen. Because the power, amen, is given to those that believe. Lord, my God, when Acts 1 and 8 said, after that the Holy Ghost come upon you, you shall have power. Lord Jesus, and not only are you going to have power, but you're going to be witness unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. Glory to God, you're going to be a witness. In other words, you're going to be a witness unto Christ. You're going to witness of the resurrection power. Glory to God, you're going to have an effect on people that are sick. Oh, Lord. People, amen, that are in darkness. You're going to bring forth light. Your light's going to shine before men that they might see your good work and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Oh, that Paul had to speak to the Corinthian church to let them know about what they amen, what they was receiving from him because it wasn't according to a whole lot of worldly wisdom. And see, a lot of times people are looking for all the accolades. They're looking for all the articulation and all the other things amen, that, is, amen, that we are accustomed with today in theological terms in order for to demonstrate the power of God. But Paul said, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and of power why because your face should not stand in the wisdom amen in the wisdom of men but in the power of God somebody said the power of God that's what my state face stands in in the power of God that's something about a demonstration of the spirit you can know when God is up to something you can know when a manifestation of the spirit is moving the gifts of the spirit will begin to operate 
Lord have mercy. Give us an apostolic church with the gifts that are operating. Glory to God. The Bible said, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 8. 1 Corinthians 12 and 8. When the manifestation of the Spirit is operating, Lord, we need it in our churches today. Lord, our churches are dying because there's no demonstration. But I'm here today as a pastor and an evangelist to stir up your pure mind and let you know that God is same today, yesterday, and forevermore. And he has not changed. Lord, he haven't changed. He haven't changed his, his method and, and his way that he moves. He's the same God. He's immutable. In other words, he's unchangeable. Glory to God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and forevermore. First Corinthians 12 and 8. Amen. By the same spirit, glory to God, it is an amazing today how that the spirits of gifts, that the gifts of the spirit are, are not operative in the churches today. Amen. The word of wisdom, amen, and uh, amen, the power, amen, the word of knowledge is not operative today. These are the power gifts, amen. These are the gifts that vocal uh, speaking gifts that are, should be operating in the house of God today. But unfortunately, you know why they're not operating? Because people are seeking the gifts of the spirit. They are seeking for other things rather than the seeking the spirit of the gifts. Glory to God. He said, you seek these things. Glory to God. Seek these things. Long for these things. Go for these things. Lord, have mercy. We need, amen, to focus back on the early church and what the early church was doing. Glory to God. What the early church had was a longing for the spirit of God to move in that midst. They wasn't concerned with churches nor, but they believe in a demonstration of a power of the spirit of God. And that's what we need to do. We we need to seek God as never before. We need to pray. We need to fast. We need to get a hold of the altar and begin to cry out to God. Lord, you did it for them. Why can't you do it for us? You're the same God that spoke the world into existence and everything came into existence. He said, let there be light and there was light. There was nothing impossible what God can do. But if we dare to trust him and to thank God for the impossible because coming a reality because that's what God wants to do. He wants to see the sick to be healed. He wants to see the lame to walk. He wants the blind to see. Oh, he wants deaf ears to be open. Oh, Lord have mercy. You don't hear me today, but I serve a God. It's a God of the living and not of the dead. I serve a God that's a God of covenant God, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the mighty God, the mighty God that we serve. I said one of the words for the word, uh, amen, when you consider the word a uh, dunamis power, you consider that he's mighty. Glory to God. I'm talking about our God is mighty. Suffering Bishop Watkins, we serve an awesome God. No one in the song where it says, my God is awesome. He reigns forever. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, I serve a reigning champion. I serve Jesus, the champion of all champions that never lost any contest. Lord have mercy. Sing about it. Preach about it. Preach about it. Bona Paul said, my speech and my words would not with enticing words of men's wisdom. I don't have to come with a whole lot of vocabulary, amen, to entice you or to get you to think, amen, that I know so much theology, but I know some neology. And God's going to demonstrate the real thing. Lord have mercy. That was a commercial back in the 60s. Amen. It was Coca-Cola. It said it's the real thing. It's the genuine move of God. Lord have mercy. I say it's the more real thing. Come on. Read on about this demonstration of the gifts of the Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. 
Lord, have mercy when you consider faith. Because faith is so important. Why is it so important? Because he says, above all, take the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery dots of the wicked one. Don't you know without faith, amen, it's impossible to please God. But he that comes to God must believe that he is God. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Are you really seeking God? Are you inquiring of him? Are you diligent? Amen. Got a search on for the Lord. You know, if you, if you lose something and you're searching intensely to find what you lost. But I said, if you continue to seek God by faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By it, the elders obtain a good report. Lord, have mercy. Look at these heroes of faith. Look at Enoch, a man that walked with God and was not because, amen, he had this testimony that he pleased God. I said, you got to have a testimony. In other, in other words, when you testify to the goodness of God, you can't have a testimony without a test. In other words, when God bring you out a test, you got a test Testimony. You can tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Ain't he a healer? Deacon Horsley. Lord have mercy. Not what I read, but what I amen experienced for my own self. You know, you know that you know about yourself, and ain't nobody gotta tell you he's a healer. You know that he's a healer. Oh God. But in the power of God. Lord, have mercy. And people looking at you all crazy and all strange when you begin to, amen, manifest the power of God. Amen. It ain't manifesting unless it's visible. It's got to be visible. It's got to be seen. It's got to be evidence. It's got to be proof. Lord, have mercy. When you see it for yourself, amen. That's why John, when, amen, he was in question about, is this a Jesus that they was talking about or do we look for another? Then he told him, say, go tell John the things that you've seen. How the lame walk, the blind see, the, amen, the deaf ears open. Glory to God. And the poor have the gospel preached to them. That's a manifestation. That's a proof of who I am. That's my credential. Hey, glory to God. That's who I am. We have a song, amen, that came out, amen, praise is who I am. Glory to God. If you really know, amen, who you are, you would praise him all the time. 